Hey, Jared Neiman here. Thank you so much for submitting your questions. I can't wait to answer them, and I also want to thank my buddy Cody Allen for having me. This is from Misty from Harrington, Delaware. She asks, is it hard to be in the country music industry? You know, if it's something that you love, it's never hard. What it is hard to do is, is to, you know, always remember that, that Nashville came from something a lot bigger than all of us. You know, sometimes you get on the road and, and uh, you're out 250 days a year and you always got to remember that your home base is in Nashville, Tennessee and you're carrying one of the many torches that makes country music what it is. So I'm very proud to be a part of it. And for me, it's easy because I love it. And this is from Nikki from Frisco, Texas. If you could do a duet with any country artist, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Well, there's many artists that uh, we've lost over the years that I'd love to team up with, but I gotta tell you, um, as close as I am to, to Lee Bryce, we've never got to do anything in the studio together, so we always have a, a, a goal in our mind to someday either do a duet album or maybe grab Randy Hauser and Jamie Johnson and, and do one together. That's a goal of mine, so hopefully someday that will come true. All right, this is from Don from Butler, Alabama. What hidden talents do you have? Well, I've learned over the years that hidden talents are hidden for a reason um, because they're usually embarrassing. But I will show you the sound of one hand clapping. And now you see why they're called hidden talents. Thank you, Don. Clyett oh, from Allendale, South Carolina. If you ever played the game of Truth or Dare, which one would you pick? You know, I always tell the truth, so I'm going for the dare. And I dare you to play Truth or Dare with me next time I see you, Clayette, my dear friend. This comes from Chelsea from Appleton, Wisconsin, one of my favorite places. What song on the new album are you most excited for fans to hear? Well, there's a song called Donkey on our new album that if you haven't heard it, I'd love for you to hear it because, as you know, in country music, there's a lot of heart, but there's also a lot of liver, and you got to treat both of them with equal respect. So that means when the party time comes around on the weekends, you got to really celebrate those weekends. And you got to figure out a way to get to the bar safely and back. And if you didn't have a ride and all you had at home was a donkey, just like me, hopefully you would hop on that donkey and ride it to the bar. So check it out. It's a new tune off our new album, High Noon. Gary from New Hampshire, what got you into singing? You know, I heard a, Gary, I heard a quote a long time ago that said, we don't choose music, music chooses us. So it was something I've done since I was so little that I don't even remember why I started it other than just music's always had a place in my heart. So uh, it's a great question. This is from Sandy from Jonesboro, Tennessee. Can you explain the symbolism behind your video, Drink to That All Night? And what is the significance in the hula hoop? Well, basically, country music is always evolving. And you know, I, as much as I do love the songs, the, the videos and bars, we want to do something a little different and also foreshadow with certain symbols like the donkey and, and the, the jersey that the guys wore in 12 which symbolizes uh, the high noon, the album. And so it's fun to put some of those foreshadows in the actual video. But uh, for me it was just trying to step out and do something a little different. And um, the actually hula hoop is just if I were going to have a fantasy after drinking some bizarre hallucination slash rum chata, whatever it was, I'll tell you that I probably would see a girl with a couple hula hoops. And I do want to give a shout out to her. She's uh, actually an elementary school art teacher in Arkansas. So thank you for all your wonderful talent in the hula hoop. And thank you for the great question. John from Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, what a great city. Who or what are you influences and inspiration for your music? Well, I have to tell you. My grandma really introduced me to some of my favorite country artists. She showed me that you could love someone like Eddie Arnold and at the same time love someone like Roger Miller. Two people that are completely on a wide array of a, of a spectrum, you know, from the good balladeer to a, a guy that knows how to not take himself too seriously, but still a musical genius, you know, in Roger Miller. And so I was so excited to be inspired by my grandma to really dig into to country music. But uh, Mr. Lefty Frizzell, he's my favorite. And that's why I have him right here. So every night I'm playing on stage, I can look down and know everything's going to be all right. And this question comes from Wendy from Baldwin, Mississippi. What's your motto or advice you live by? Um, you know, I just say, it's kind of cliche, but I say, love on everybody. You know, there's enough bad news in this world. Bad things happen to all of us on accident. There's no reason to go out and deliberately hurt somebody. Just love on everybody. So thank you. And also... 
I did want to give a shout out to you because Wendy actually has a tattoo that says, Only God Can Love You More. So she's showing the love herself. All right. Darina from Medford, Oregon. What is your inspiration story behind High Noon? Well, I grew up in southwest Kansas, and if you really look back into like a old Dodd City where they had the Boot Hill and, and Wyatt Earp and all that, there's a lot of heritage um, out there. You know, I grew up in a cattle town called Liberal Kansas, and, and a High Noon is one of those, those moments in, in a movie where the good guy, mostly a Western, where a good guy and a bad guy meet, and you kind of see uh, who's going who's gonna to win when you walk 10, 15 steps this way, turn around, and the guns are blazing. But in this case for me, Anytime I go into the studio, I always attempt to make music that hopefully means something to somebody. Definitely means a lot to me. And so I guess my nemesis or what I'm trying to uh, win in this particular situation in, in, my, in my battle at high noon is the future. I want everybody to just give the music a chance. And, uh, but for the most part, sometimes I also wake up at high noon. All right. Robin from Murfreesboro, right around the corner. Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? You know, that's always a question that stumps me because I, I just hope that I get to be making country music. I hope I get to be playing music for you all over the country. And I also hope that I get to continue uh, just trying to team up with certain charities. I love St. Jude, um, many, many places like that. I just launched a charity called Free the Music. So hopefully in 10 years, we'll be able to look back and, and, and hopefully have helped a lot of people. This is a... Uh, Kim from Grand Rapids, Michigan. What artist would you see and pay money to see? I would say uh, I would love to go to Bonnaroo and just blow it out one week and just tear it up. And I think moments like that would be priceless. Um, also, I would pay every night of my life to go sit in the Grand Ole Opry and watch all of our country legends. Um, there's just something about recharging your uh, honky-tonk soul when you go to... Uh, the mother church of country music so definitely anybody at the Opry but I like those big festivals too this is from Sarah from Hickory North Carolina what was it like to go on tour with Miranda Lambert Blake Shelton Chris Young and the Pistol Annies well I gotta tell you as a country music fan myself one of the greatest honors of being in the country music family is when you meet people that you look up to and you appreciate their music you listen to it for years and they're actually cooler behind the curtain than you ever even imagined. So everybody that you named are all people that I'm very, very thankful to have gotten to know. And uh, I just got to say, I'm even a bigger fan now than I was before I met him, which I didn't think was possible. So all those people you named continue to be their fans. They're, they're great people. This is a Shane from East Rutherford, New Jersey. Did you make up your Twitter name or did a friend? Well, being from Kansas originally, uh, I just wanted to, my name's always been spelled real weird. Uh, my parents definitely didn't do me any favors when it came to that. So uh, being from Kansas, J-Rod from Oz just uh, was my way to simplify, but I'm sure it probably made it more complicated. This is Katie from Dallas, Texas. Speaking of, do people still mispronounce your name? If so, what variations? Oh, that's a good one. Well, I will tell you, not only do they mispronounce it, they actually misspell it all the time. And I just was uh, actually at a show recently and they had my name spelled one particular way incorrectly on the poster. They had it spelled incorrectly in a different way on the ticket. And they had it spelled incorrectly another way, actually on the stage where uh, my mic, the tape, where my mic stands. So, um, so yes, it definitely ran into that problem. But uh, I've learned that I will take any version of my name over being called a four-letter word. <laughs> All right, Jeremy from Richmond, Virginia. Has a female celebrity ever called you out of the blue? It made you feel like, wow, she called me. Well, sort of. You know, I, uh, I can't really say that's the case, but the closest situation I've ever had to that is on the last album. Uh, I originally, originally reached out to Colby Calais to sing on a song called I'm All About You. And I didn't know, I had never met her, and I didn't know if uh, she'd even be interested in it. And so she listened to the song, and I can still remember I was in a Virginia Beach, and she called me, and uh, man, what a class act. Not only is she a... Grammy award-winning artist and one of my favorite voices in all of music but man she is her heart is huge and, and uh, so if you haven't picked up Colby Calais music check it out she is one of those girls that definitely make you make you blush a little bit all right this is Kelsey from Peoria Illinois 
Do you ever stop on tour in really small towns and surprise any fans? Uh, you know, we have. We've done things here and there. I would love to do that every... I would love to do it every day. Um, sometimes, you know, we're flying. It's impossible. And sometimes you, when you leave at night to go to another city, you really just are in crunch time. But I, I'm from a small town. We had music once a year at fairs. And uh, that was the only time we ever got to see live bands. So there's something definitely... Uh, it hits home when I think about small towns, and so that's actually a great idea. I'm gonna I'm gonna make an absolute goal to to do that more. So thank you for that great question, uh, Jesse from Little Rock, Arkansas. What's the one thing you can't live without while you're on tour? Well, Jesse, I don't think I can really give you all the true answers here because you don't want to give away all the secrets. But I will say, not to be cliche, but Jack Daniels, which for all you non-drinkers out there. You know, you have to understand that I am a professional, and uh, I don't want you to try this at home. But I will say, a little nip of Jack Daniels, a nip, never hurt nobody. And it's always good just to have a small cheers before you go on stage with your guys and, and uh, tell them how much you appreciate having them out on the road. Catherine from Parkland, Florida. Have you ever done a Christmas album or thought about doing one? Absolutely. i got to tell you, as a kid, my very first album that I actually ever owned was a Christmas album, and it was George Strait, Merry Christmas Straight to You, and uh, I listened to it year-round, and finally my dad one day said, hey, you know he has other albums than just Christmas songs, but his voice was so good, I just didn't care, and uh, so I've actually written a couple Christmas songs that uh, I've kind of kept tucked away, and uh, so someday, hopefully soon, I would love to get in the studio and maybe record some of the new Christmas songs, but then, of course, mix it with some of my old favorites, so... If you could run over anything with a Munster truck, what would it be? Well, I would say just a pile of cars, you know, like you see in the demolition derbies. I just want to ramp over the whole crowd. I don't want to hit the crowd. I want to ramp over the crowd into, like, the Gravitron at a fair or the, you know, Ferris wheel or something. I just, chaos. But I want, you, I want you in my passenger seat. Nick from Des Moines, Iowa. Do you know what the next single from High Noon will be? Well, I have to say it's not certain when the album comes out, I want to know what all of you think the next song should be. But I have to say, if I have my vote, it's going to be hard not to ride that donkey down to the, the honky-tonky. Lexi from Barnesville, Georgia. If you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you want to go? You know, I would love to go over, just maybe see the seven wonders of the world. You know, just, uh, you know, you see them on TV and they're mind-boggling. So, I don't know, I mean, pyramids botanical gardens, you know, any place that you suggest. And then we'll stop in Key West and stay a month. Haley from Chesterton, Indiana. What do you like in your spare time besides singing or write? I like to do, uh, I like to play cornhole, which some part of our country call it bean bags, so I don't want you to get the wrong idea. And I love the big green egg. It's the smoker. I got it for my birthday. So literally every day I'm cooking on the big green egg and uh, playing cornhole that I can. And we have cornhole boards on the road. I also like to work out. It may not look like that, but I do. All right, Jessica from Clinton, New Jersey. With High Noon out today, does your record label already tell you when you should put out your next one? How does that work? That is actually an amazing question. What you do is uh, usually put out your first single, and then in, in a perfect world, when that song's doing the best it possibly can do, hopefully number one on the charts, and it's getting all the exposure, you want to release your album. And then around after your second song is peaking is when you really want to start getting back in the studio. That way you have time to really create hopefully a great record that uh, the fans will really enjoy. Because if you wait too long, you're, they're all of a sudden they're asking for it and, and you're throwing stuff together. And that's not what you want to do for your fans that are spending their hard-earned money to, to let you make music for them. So uh, I usually try, I always, I never quit recording. But usually every two years is when an album comes out. Scott from Morgantown, West Virginia. Do you have any ATVs or 4x4s? Atta boy! I'll tell you what I got. I got a 1978 CJ5 Jeep, which is my pride and joy. And uh, clearly I'm talking to another off-road man. And uh, man, I love it. It just doesn't get any better than getting out there and just getting muddy. So one of these days we're going to have to figure out a time to do that. Jack from Edmond, Oklahoma. What's your favorite sport to watch and what team? I love college football. I usually watch the NFL right around wild card. Um, I, I keep up with it, but not. I don't get to watch every week. But when it comes to college football, 
we have so many guys on our bus from different areas that we watch it all. Uh, I grew up in Kansas, um, big Kansas State fan, but I also uh, just over time have since I watch so much, we, we watch the, the Buckeyes, we watch the Fighting Irish, we watch Alabama, we got uh, Tennessee, we've got all these different uh, huge football fans on our bus, and I know you're not supposed to go for more than one team, but I have to say, you know, you start kind of cheering on your buddies' teams too, because you're there every year together, so, but deep down, Wildcats, baby. Patty from Denver, Colorado, what do you typically have for breakfast? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, the most important meal of the day. Well, you know, I love omelets and stuff. There's a place in Nashville called Nashville that's got these great omelets and these little potato cakes. If you're ever in Nashville, you got to check it out. But on the road, I mean, really, I just wake up and I'll have like, a, there's just not much on there. I mean, I'll have a, some cereal, some Cap'n Berries, Frankenberries, and some Cap'n Crunch. Lana from Erie, Pennsylvania. What is your biggest pet peeve? Um, I feel like phone bombing. You know, like if someone calls you and you don't answer because you're clearly doing something that's very important, like this right now, I clearly wouldn't answer my phone because I'm visiting with you. So if someone calls me over and over, that means whatever they're doing clearly is more important than what I'm doing. And I just feel like that's rude. So phone bombing is my pet peeve. Hannah from Maine. What's the best part about your job? You know, I got to be honest. Uh, kind of falls in two categories just getting to sing country music every night something I wanted to do since I was just a little kid um, that's the best part of my job is to be able to get on stage and play but being able to travel this beautiful country over and over and over and hit the big cities the small towns and just to learn about uh, all the great little charming things that make all these little towns and great and big cities great and also getting to to know you the country music fan and uh, hugging your necks and telling you thank you for letting me be a part of it it's the best part well, thanks again for submitting your questions to me. i got to say, they were great questions. Really enjoyed answering them. And thanks again to my partner in crime, Mr. Cody Allen.